Well, brothers and sisters, as we talked about, today is Pentecost. And so we are going to read the story of Pentecost, and then we're going to talk about uh, what God is doing here and what it means for us today, the power of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Let us read from Acts chapter 2, starting at the beginning of the chapter, and then moving on to the end of the story of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and knowledge, foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet, and he knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his own descendants on the throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, 
and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of, the, of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you see here, see and now hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool to your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it can be so difficult to think about the power of the gospel in this way, in our day and age, we tend to think that the gospel is, is something that, that is weak. We, we maybe don't think that consciously, but we act like it. We think it in our bones, as it were. And maybe there's good reason for that, because we look at, at, at our country, we look at this world, and we see that in many places of this world, the gospel seems to be in decline. There seem to be less and less Christians, less and less Christ followers, as opposed to more and more. And yet, this text indicates that the power of the Holy Spirit was great. And since we know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we must, we must believe that the power of the Holy Spirit is still great today. But let's think about this conversion experience. A little bit earlier this uh, spring, I, I picked up a book called The Infographic Bible by Karen uh, Swirls, and, and I'm so excited about that. And in it, she, she goes through and, and puts in pictorial form, all kinds of useful information from the Bible and puts it in a way that we can see and, and digest. And, and her, her diagram for the day of Pentecost inspired me to put this video that you're seeing uh, in, in the background together. You see, one of the things we lose sight of is just how deeply powerful the message that God gave through Peter and through the power of the Holy Spirit was during that day. How many people were converted to the faith on that day? How many people were baptized? How many people came to faith in God? You see, all of these people here came to faith in God. Each star represents one person. I was, I was putting a new star on every, uh, every second or so, but it was taking way too long. It was going to take forever for all the stars to show up, and so I sped it up. There, there's a new star on this video every 0 .01 seconds. Not 0 .1 seconds, not one second, but every 0 .01 seconds a new star shows up. A new believer converted on this day. What a beautiful thing. But does the power of the gospel, does the power of the Holy Spirit still command that kind of ability today? 
Yes, brothers and sisters, it definitely does. Now, I don't know what the Holy Spirit will do with this message. I don't know if thousands of people will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I hope so. But the power is there. The power of the Holy Spirit lives within us. The power to give us the good gifts that we heard about during the confession and assurance time. The power to bring the dead to life. The power to, to maintain and sustain and grow and create. That power is alive and well today, brothers and sisters. And that power is sorely needed in this world, not, not to make us glorified, not to make Christ followers seem great or fantastic or whatever, not to put us on a throne or anything, but to put Christ on the throne, to bring healing and reconciliation in this world. I've been reading uh, I've been reading the history of Christianity by Justo Gonzalez and it is a wonderful wonderful book. And in the very beginning of the book he he starts off with the time period just after Jesus' death and resurrection and, and during the early church. He starts off with the story of Pentecost and and how dramatic that was. But then he starts off talking about the reality of the early church, the church in Jerusalem. And it was wonderful. We hear so many good things about the church in Jerusalem, how it shared all things in common. But not everything was peaches and cream there. We hear early on in the account of the time after, the, after Pentecost, we hear about how uh, some of the, the Greeks, the Hellenists, were complaining that their widows and orphans were not being cared for as well as the Jews. And, and what, the, what the Bible really means there is that there were, there were, at this time, there were really only Jewish people who were part of, uh, who were Christ followers. There hadn't been Gentiles brought in. And so we're talking about two different groups of Jewish people. We're talking about Hellenists, people who were, who, who were Jewish by descent, but who were influenced by the Greek culture of the surrounding world, who maybe came from various parts of the world, just like the people we hear about in this story of Pentecost. And then the other group were the, the Hebrews, the people of Jerusalem and of Judea and of Palestine, the, the, the place where Jesus lived and grew up and so on. And apparently, consciously or not, somehow there was a bias against those of more Greek cultural background. The Jews, whether they meant to or not, the the Hebrews were discriminating against those of that broader Hellenistic culture. Sadly, we can identify with that all too well in our society. We need the gifts of the Spirit which were designed to serve one another and to serve this world. Why? Because we were given a ministry of reconciliation. That, that witnessing that we were called to do when Jesus ascended into heaven and he said to the disciples that they would be his witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That commission for us to be his witnesses means that he was going to send his Holy Spirit to us so that we could show people in both our words and in our deeds, the love of God for all his image bearers, for all the people of this earth, both within our congregations, within our churches, and outside of. 
And because of the Holy Spirit, a little bit later on, the disciples are able to put in place the put in place the deacons, among whom was Stephen. It's interesting, the deacons, all of them have Greek sort of names. All of them were Hellenists. All of them were Jewish people who had that Greek sort of culture, who were then given powerful voices within the church to enable them to bring justice to a portion of the church that had been neglected. And Stephen, who receives the Holy Spirit in great power, he becomes the first martyr that we know of, of the faith. And the gospel is spread because, partly because, the disciples listened to the Holy Spirit and used the gifts of the Spirit to serve the community and share the good news. Now, brothers and sisters, you saw that video go by once, but the reality is, is that that was only half. Of the people. You watch it again going on in the background and you can see that there is another half. 1,500 people in each of those slides and the slides are pretty much covered with stars. I don't know whether the Holy Spirit will have worked in the lives of the people watching this, of you and me and whoever is watching this, to cause them to give their lives to Jesus, to cause them to repent of the evil that they have done, to cause them to want to follow Jesus. I, I pray that it does. But I do know, I do know very much, that you and I who already know Jesus, who follow Jesus, you and I who are already filled with the Spirit, we have this same great power. And it must show itself in love. In love for one another. And in love for all God's image bearers. Brothers and sisters, do not, <clears throat> do not underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not underestimate the power of the gospel. It is the, the power to be God's witnesses in this world, to bring love, the love of God alive for people, and to minister reconciliation in this very broken world. I'm reminded of uh, the cartoon from when I was a kid, uh, He-Man. Perhaps some of you remember He-Man. Uh, and <clears throat> I hesitate to do this. But during the show, in the beginning of the show, and sometime throughout the show too, you, you saw He-Man, who, who is just a, a timid prince sort of person in his normal life, he is transformed because there is some evil to be faced. He is transformed by this magical ceremony. And he stands there with his sword and he goes, I have the power! And then he goes off and he rescues people and saves the day and so on. Brothers and sisters, you and I, have the power, not to glorify ourselves, but to glorify God and spread his love and good news in this world. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we pray, would you please help us through your Holy Spirit to share your love. May we know that we have the power, not in our own strength, but in the Holy Spirit, to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. That we have the power to bring the ministry of reconciliation in this world. That we have the power to be your witnesses. That we have power no less great than the power you poured out upon Peter and all of the disciples 
on that Pentecost day so long ago. May we use that power to spread your love and your kingdom today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.